Howdy, y'all. To follow up on my previous video about Norumbega, said to be a lost city of Norse origin in America, which contained mystical trinkets, relics, jewels, and massive buildings and architectural feats, I've now uncovered a published book from the historian Arthur Wise in the year 1881, which suggests that Norumbega actually existed on top of the Palisades in New York. If you're unfamiliar with the Palisades, also known as the New Jersey or Hudson River Palisades, they are a line of steep cliffs stretching for roughly 20 miles from northeastern New Jersey into southeastern New York. The Palisades rise nearly perfectly vertical to 540 feet tall at their northern terminus. They are absolutely beautiful, appearing to domineer over the rest of the Hudson River Valley. Nowadays, the Palisades make up the Palisades Interstate Park and are a national natural landmark. The name Palisade is said to be derived from Latin, meaning a stake. However, the word Palisade has traditionally been used throughout time to describe a defensive wall, fence, usually composed of trees or stakes. Tying this back into a second video I just made, where we discussed the first presidential seal of America, I noticed in the seal what appeared to be a representation, at least in my opinion, of a great wall of giant trees. That seal, used from 1774 until 1788, also appears to show representations of star forts or fortified cities and earthworks with sacred geometry. Now, interestingly, knowing the name Palisades essentially means giant wall of stakes or trees. When we look through these photographs, could you possibly imagine a larger structure sitting on top of these cliffs? We are told that Norumbega was a raised city with pillars of gold and crystal and residents who wore pearls and other fine jewels. Interestingly, when we look into the ancient burial mounds of the indigenous people of North America, we often find these very same materials. Norumbega, as an earthwork, was said to stretch for nearly one mile in length, being fully walled or fortified. When contrasted with the Palisades, we see both being depicted upon the very first maps of the New World. Mercator included the Palisades on his original 1541 map of America with the name suggested by Giovanni de Verrazzano, who was said to be the first to visit and document the Palisades while traveling the Hudson River Valley. In the current narrative, we are told the Palisades were constantly being quarried. Deep down in this narrative, it is written, two massive landmarks, which I could not find depicted in any photographs, known as Washington Head and Indian Head, were demolished off of the Palisades for, quote, materials. We also have an interesting group of indigenous people known as Taratin, which are said to have influenced the history of the area before the European settlers arrived. Taratin, as a name, kind of reminds me of Tartarian. Finally, we have Arthur J. Wise of New York, who published The Discovery of America to the year 1525, which we are referencing in this video. In that work, which discusses many of the anomalies found throughout the American landscape, he concludes the book with his discoveries on Norumbega. Arthur argues that Norumbega is a contraction of a French word, La Enormi Berger, meaning the Grand Scarp. This was the name given to the Palisades by the French during the first explorations of the Hudson River Valley, a scarp being a very steep bank or slope, or an eroded or purposefully cut slope or hillside meant for defensive purposes. I again find this name to be very revealing when we consider the possibility of Norumbega once sitting on top of these cliffs. So basically, the French gave this name to the Palisades, which sounded much like Norumbega, and the name itself meant steep cliff or defensive cliff. What better defense for your city than 300 to 500 foot tall walls? We can also weigh the argument of petrification here. What we see in the Palisades are some absolutely breathtaking formations which we seldom see in other parts of the world. The perfect lines and angles and the shapes of the Palisades certainly leaves us with a slew of different thoughts 
when we regard the formation and foundation of this landscape. Could the Palisades actually be considered a possible location for Norumbega? Could these vertical walls or cliffs actually be retaining much more history? Continuing in this book from 1881, we are also told that Norumbega River is almost certainly the Hudson River. Arthur makes this argument because apparently all of the oldest transcripts say that the Norumbega River is salty to the height of 40 leagues, noting that the Hudson is brackish beyond the city of Poughkeepsie. Again, the clues here are not as bountiful as the photographs, and therefore all we read must be taken with a grain of salt. But with an uptick on views and comments on my video about Norumbega in the last few days, I thought I would at least take the time to try and share a few more interesting ideas about this lost city with you, this being one of the more interesting that I had found. To imagine a beautiful old world fortification on top of, or partially within, the Palisades fills the soul with a sense of wonderment, to say the least. Now, with most locations like this, we also have a very interesting history when we look at the current narrative coming into modern times. While the land is protected today throughout the late 1800s and the early 1900s, the Palisades were the location of many massive masonry built mansions. This was referred to as Millionaire's Row. Oddly, these mansions, which littered the cliffs of the Palisades through the early 1900s, would eventually all be torn down by the 1930s. Even stranger is, we are told that a few of the very richest men, specifically Rockefeller is named, actually purchased what remained of these mansions around the 1930 time period only to donate them to the city, which then basically immediately had them demolished. The current narrative tells us this was done to secure the unobstructed view of the skyline of New York. However, I find that reasoning to be a bit paper thin. We can also look through the ruins of these mansions today. We don't have many, if any, photographs of these mansions from the 1800s that I could locate. Definitely no construction photographs. I'm not saying that that tells us something one way or another, but to imagine that the richest men in the world would first construct these homes and then have no proof of the beginnings or the architecture is rather fascinating. Adding to that narrative, when we look at the ancient and buried ruins of these mansion homes, we are now finding them to be long overgrown and we see that basically every single home at least at its base level which remains today was built with the same exact types of material the brick or stonework the masonry all of it throughout each ruined mansion in the palisades is exactly the same at least it appears as if these were all built at the exact same time or part of one much larger construction project these ruins can still be seen today and they're literally everywhere within the Palisades, especially at the apex. We find these buried rooms, buried walkways, or stone staircases in the middle of the forest. And we also find four to five story ruins, which seem to indicate just how large these original mansion structures really were. Absolutely massive.
Now, another aspect of this narrative that I believe we can decode is the amusement park, which resided on top of the Palisades for many years. This amusement park had all the amenities of the time, which would be seen as cutting edge, including a fully electric trolley, which appeared to traverse the Palisade cliffs. I tried to find as many old world photographs of the amusement park as I could, but essentially I did not find as many as I would have liked to. But to tie things together more, the Palisades Amusement Park also at one point had the largest saltwater pool in the world, at least that's what the narrative says. Again, when we discuss Norumbega, Norumbega was built on and used brackish or salt water. And then we see a massive saltwater pool appearing on top of the cliffs of the Palisades. It's very remarkable that we can tie or link these two things together. But again, we don't have much that has survived of this theme park until today. Much of the amusement or theme park was destroyed by a fire in 1944, and the rest was eventually torn down closer to the 1970s. Currently, the Palisades is very much the scenic view it once was. We do have more modern buildings existing on the lower portions of the Palisades, but the view you see from New York is essentially the natural view that we saw hundreds of years ago. Massive, unique, almost undisturbed. Now apparently, from what I was reading, the massive corporation LG is planning to build on top of the Palisades. However, Residents of the area are highly resistant to this idea. In conclusion, I just wanted to share the idea about the Palisades and Norumbega for those of you who might be interested in New York history or Old Norse history or mysterious Norumbega history or Old World history in general. Obviously, we may never know exactly where the ancient lost city of Norumbega existed, if it did at all, but to imagine it sitting on the cliffs of the Palisades is a thought that was at least worth mentioning in a video, especially when we have historian Arthur J. Wise and a handful of others who in the 1800s agreed that this was true and basically pushed that concept onto the public. I could really find no modern evidence after the year 1950 that ties the Palisades to the lost city of Norumbega. But I believe I'm gonna wrap up the video right there. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments about the Palisades, the ruins found on top, Norumbega, the river, and the possibility of these all being tied together down below. If you have any more relevant information, I would also love to hear about it so we can hopefully dissect this narrative together. I hope you enjoyed these images and I hope they help your imagination visualize what once could have been. Please hit the thumbs up, like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and be sure to join me very soon for the next one.